Hey, you want to hear something zany? We're going to continue in the book of Revelation. You want to hear something that's not zany? The passages we're going through, th- there's no way we can learn it all in one session. So not zany. And I could go over it and over it and over it. And we still couldn't mine all of it. So we're going to go over as much as I can and see how it goes. (laughs) It's going to be nuts. All right. I, John, this is uh, verse nine. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. What happens to people that bring about the testimony of Jesus? They're persecuted. They go through tribulation. Patmos, uh, apparently there was a prison there. I think John was there. Some say he wrote this the way he did to make sure the guards couldn't um, understand it. You're going to find that there's things in here that you can say this is true or that's true or both are true. I've come under experience to believe that both are true. He probably wrote this. God told him to write this so that the guard, the way he did, so that the guards wouldn't be able to decipher it and it served its purpose. Um, So tribulation here means the tribulation that comes with sharing the gospel. Now, also, when he says, um, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, it reminds me, the first thing that struck me was Jesus before Pilate, where he just is quiet. And there were several accounts where he was just quiet to others' frustrations. Constant patience in the garden praying. All the disciples had fallen asleep. Just patience. Um, And that's what John was practicing, was the kind of patience that would be required of him. 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Now, Ten Commandments announced with a trumpet, right? So a trumpet... This is interesting given what we've studied here recently. With a trumpet, you, um, is, is, yes, it's a signal, right? To go to war or a signal to go to worship, but it's also called an action. So this is a, this is a call to action. Um, Is it all of those things? Yeah, Probably. 11. Sorry, I've, I've got to, I just got to make this. We'll never get through all this. It'll be a three day video. I'd have to buy a new phone. 11. Saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to uh, Pergamum. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, this is a good one. And to uh, Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and the Laodicea. 12. Then I returned to then I turned to see that uh that voice I'm sorry. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. He might just mean the origin of the voice, but I don't think so. I think he's going to give us visualization of the voice. I don't believe this was meant to be drawn out in artistic expression. As you as you type in these verses, you'll get a lot of art. And you, you'll see why here. So a very famous thing coming up. Can't go over all of it. It's just 13. And in the midst of the lamp stands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. I try to memorize the name of this type of lamp stand. You think... Seven lampstands, right? And in the art, you'll see the seven separate lampstands with Jesus standing in the middle. But 
it's a, a menorah, I think is what it's called. A menorah is seven lampstands attached to one, which is in the tabernacle. So a lot being said here. I, I can't, it, we could spend all day on it. It's fascinating that they're each lit. They're in the tabernacle. They're, they're God, it's God's, or does I say tabernacle? Maybe God's temple. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure on that, but God's temp, because there is a you know difference between the tabernacle and the temple. But um, so the people, the church is God's temple now. And the menorah is, um, so the seven churches are connected. So they're not apart. There, there's a connection here. And see, now think about this. This is enormously complicated. There, this, this imagery brings about so much. What's a lampstand do? It's meant to bring light. What happens if your lampstand's taken away? You're no longer a light, right? If you're familiar with Revelation at all, you know we're getting ready to hear about that. So... There's a lot of meaning, so much so that to the untrained ear, to say someone doesn't take the Bible serious or something like that, they would go, you guys are reading way too much into this. Nope, we sure aren't. Go to your Old Testament. I haven't even brought up the Old Testament passages this is all referring to. It's just tons, tons. But I'll say this from my own experience, my second dream. To see... The second dream, I would have normally written off as a bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? Just dreams, just your, your mind having dreams. It, if it were not for the experience of the dream, which I still, it's seared in my brain. I mean, when will I forget it? I don't know if I ever will. It is just so visually striking, but I can't eat, there's no words for it, right? It's like seeing the voice, turning to see the voice. I, I don't have words for it. It's just an experience I can't explain. It's a vision probably more than a dream. And then to see the the vision play out in the real world, to, to the interpretation, which no one, I didn't seek after, it came to me. And to see all of this activity, right? Sort of give you a little visualization here. From what a couple months later, weeks later, maybe from Afghanistan into the United Arab Emirates, all that was centered. If you did your reading on this, which I did, and and cor and corresponded with the with the missionaries that were in United Arab Emirates, that was a pivotal area. I was talking in the comments section to someone on YouTube, and 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 she goes. Well, I don't know why um, she was, it was a Christian church in the United Arab Emirates. And she was like, well, I don't know why you're talking about Afghanistan because that's pretty far away. And I was like, uh, well, you need to read the articles about the air hubs. They're important. They're an important issue right now. And all of these things came together with a complexity no human being is just going to do. I could have sat there forever and not come up with this stuff. But that in no way means you should take that and go, all right, I'm going to use that to interpret the book of Revelation. I'm not doing that. I'm simply saying that visions that God gives and so forth, they have this kind of fingerprint on them where they're just beyond human capacity. The best interpretation is probably that God meant all of these things. And that's not far-fetched. It's just not. And not just because of my dream, but because of what you see over and over and over in biblical prophecy and visions. They're just complicated. Also, take this into account, too. Again, we're, all so, we're already at a 10-minute. I'm nowhere near finishing this. We're just not going to be able to go through all this. We'll have to start over. Okay. But consider this. You, you've got biblical prophecy and its complexity all throughout history. You see it over and over and over. What is my, one of my favorite verses of the Bible is what Solomon says that the role of wisdom is so that the so that you can cipher the riddles of the wise. What does Jesus do? He he spews out riddles. He never just throws information for people to get. He offers interpretations, 
But he never just flat out gives information. That's not rabbinic. That's not teaching. That's not wisdom. Jesus did it the wise, rabbinic, didactic way. He offered a riddle to be solved. That's God's hallmark. That's wisdom. He doesn't just give you. We see it over and over. What does Paul say? That we would reach out and, and feel for God and look for him. These people that come along and they want electronics in the, to be predicted in the Bible. And what's he doing up there? It's just absurd. Give them one good study of the book of Revelation. Probably won't matter though. Because they'll just say, you're just foisting so much on the text. And it's like, well, at some point, you just have to know that, that there's a pattern in the Bible. And you have to take it serious in order to do that. Now, Sam Harris one time cautioned atheists to not debate our texts with us because we know them better than them. Does that tell you how blind they're choosing to be or what? All right. No lampstand for those guys. Well, hopefully they'll be saved and there will be a lampstand for them. But all right. Twelve. I'm going back to 12. Then I turned to see the voice, which is a voice, you can't see it, that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a gold sash around his chest. 20 seconds. I'll just say this. Um, this was apparently... Um, talking about nourishment, getting milk. The pagan gods did this kind of thing. They got nourishment. And this could be saying um, gold meant spiritual power to you get your nourishment only from Jesus, only from the person of Christ. Part two tomorrow. Uh, we'll pick up in verse 14.